necessary in April 1941. And this struck us, this man daring to say in public that it was inevitable and even necessary. Long before that, everyone had bought salt, sugar, matches and petroleum. They were big petroleum bottles, 50 liters in size. We even had one that held 100 liters. I don't know what they were for in the old times. Everything was being hoarded. It was a regime that lied. No one told the truth, absolutely never. They never told him that they had come to arrest him. Oh, no. They came to offer him a job at the university, and they begged him to come. Terror was a pervasive component of Soviet life. Right after the coup d'etat in June, they began to arrest people. 2,000 people were killed on Estonian territory during the Red Year. On June 14, 1941, 10,000 people were deported. 4,000 of them were children. Early in the morning of June the 14th, they came for us. We had already reckoned with the likelihood that father would be taken away. I remember that I was the last one still asleep when mother came. She woke me up. She said, wake up, Lea. They have come for father. I was startled and started to cry. But I got up and there was a militia man sitting right there in the room who said it was probably going to be all right. There we stood or sat. Suddenly one of the Russians said, what are you thinking? Start packing. They didn't even tell us in the beginning that they had come for us. A lorry was parked before the door and we were put on the lorry and the drive began. It was an open truck. We saw other such vehicles. There was a man, an acquaintance, just in his light overcoat, standing in a lorry, his head held upright. There was a big convoy ahead. On the whole, the mood was totally peaceful, dignified. They stayed put for three days. They were assembled during Friday night and didn't leave until Monday. This leave-taking was awful, how they cried and sang through the windows. The Chancellery of State, the early hours on that historical June the 22nd. The offices of the Broadcasting Corporation. Preparations are underway for the transmission of the Führer's proclamation by all German radio stations. Minister of State Dr. Goebbels reads out the Führer's proclamation. For the first time in front of the entire world, this reveals the plot between London and Moscow against Germany. Now at the twelfth hour, the Führer is drawing the only possible conclusion, saying, I've decided to put the fate and future of the German country into the hands of our soldiers again. The German army now protects Europe from the Northern Cape to the Black Sea, on land, at sea, and in air, side by side with the Finns and the Romanians. Italy will join us spontaneously, Slovakia as well. Only a year before, everyone had been afraid of war. Now the Estonian people waited for the German-Russian war as their only way out. The horrors of the Red Year had largely changed attitudes towards the Germans. No one had an inkling that German army would take Tallinn in just two months and a week.
the chance someone might predict that the Red Army would reconquer Tallinn three years and three months from now was even more remote.